I'm thankful for many things in life, and one of the smaller things for which I am thankful is that no one that I play games with regularly likes to sing at the table. I have played with a few people in the past that will burst in the song lyrics for every single thing that comes up, one reference after another to some song, and I understand they're having fun and enjoying themselves, and I sound like a grump when I say I don't like that, but I don't like that. I'm sorry. I can't help it, and thankfully, the people I play games with are thinking along the same lines and we all get along great. Ideally, you find someone who also meshes with you perfectly for the games that you play. And I bring that up because today I'm talking about Rocket Men, a design by Martin Wallace. I will confess that every single time I say Rocket Men or hear someone else say Rocket Men, my mind automatically hears the but thankfully, no one actually sings that out loud or says anything, and we just get on focusing on the game. Rocketman is a deck-building, press-your-luck engine-building game. We'll go into details of what all that is in a moment. And you are trying to launch missions into space. How well you do that will determine whether you win or not. Let's talk about how to play. Here are the components for Rocket Man, set up and ready to play. The game board is extremely busy with cards you can purchase and other cards you can purchase and a score track and another track and icons and numbers all over the place. It's a lot to take in, so I'm going to talk about the game at a somewhat high level before we get into some details. In general, you are going to be scoring points by completing missions. And to complete a mission, you are going to launch a rocket into space either to Earth orbit, where you have five missions that you can complete, or to the Moon, where you have four missions, or to Mars, where you have three missions. And these 12 missions are duplicated in the 12 starting cards in your deck. There are three spaceship missions, so you have three spaceship cards. There's only one orbital shipyard, so you have one card there. And the cards duplicate some information, such as needing six engine points, before you can launch the orbital sh shipyard and it shows the reward that you'll get. But you don't have all the cards in your hand at all times, so all the information is on the board so you can see it there as well. In general, you are going to be deciding what mission you want to do and you place it on your board. Again, I'm skipping some details right now. The orbital shipyard, again, you can only go to Earth if you put down a spaceship as your mission. You don't have to declare where you're going at that time. You can surprise us later when you actually launch it, which is not how things work, but doesn't matter. When you put that mission down, you have an engine target. You know you need three, five, or 10 engines because that's what it says on the card and on the board. You are going to be building up things on your launch pad, which is the space to the side here, which is currently on the board since I don't have a camera that can pan out big enough. We'll work on that. I've got to suspend things from the ceiling in the future. You're going to be building up some engines and other things on your launch pad. And then when you are ready to go, when you have sufficient engine points for your destination, you can decide to launch. If I launch without three engine points, I automatically fail. So you must build up engines first before you can actually launch. You are then going to look at the icon needed for your destination. Chips to go to Earth and Flask to the Moon and Helices to Mars. They have official names in the rules, but that's how we refer to them. You count those up. So if I'm going to Earth and I start with two chips, I move the rocket to two because I've done some advanced prep. And then I'm going to flip over three cards from the mission success deck one by one. When you go to the moon, you flip four and Mars is five. And the components of the deck are shown here. There's one four, four threes, six twos, five ones, and two zeros. So I flip a card, Ugh, nothing. I don't move at all. I can decide to keep going or I can abort my launch. I have two more cards to reveal and I need to move six spaces to get to Earth. And you can calculate the odds if you wish, what's possible. Okay, I only move one. I now need a five and there is no five with my last flip. So yes, I will abort the launch. When you abort a launch, you lose cards from your launch pad equal to 
the number of cards you revealed minus one. So I would lose one card throwing it away to my discard pile. If I had stopped after flipping the zero, I don't lose any cards. Essentially, I checked out the conditions, I looked at whether things look favorable or not, and it turns out, nope, not ready yet. Okay, let's just scrub it and we'll try again on my next turn. If I had flipped something better and moved two, maybe I said, okay, I'll keep going. Another two, and now I've got a real chance here. Am I gonna succeed or not? If I flip something good, I succeed. Yes, I will mark the mission. I'm the first one to do a spaceship, I get two points. A spaceship in Earth orbit, that is, I get two points. Everyone else who comes after me gets one point and all emissions are structured that way where the first person gets one point more. And I get the permanent bonus of one engine that I add to my card. So I always have that engine point for future launches. This card is now removed from my deck. So that is sort of good because I already did it. I don't need it anymore. However, I lose whatever this resource is is that shows in the left hand corner of the card because the cards do many things all the cards here all right that is in general how mission works oh if i had failed by the way let's say i had flipped up that one from before and only went here so i actually went all the way through the launch i revealed the three cards i didn't make it to earth orbit i have to take everything in my launch pad and discard it I actually shot that rocket into space and whoo, it just went off who knows where. Not where I wanted to go. I lost all those resources into my discard pile and then I have to start building them again before I can launch. So that's the press your luck element of the game is you're going to be building up resources to launch missions with a you know somewhat varied chance of success depending on how well you've prepared. If I have built up five computer chips or can start at five because there are some cards that will let you move further before you launch, such as the backup systems, where if it's on the launch pad during launch, you just move forward one space. It also provides a computer chip. So when I'm going into earth orbit, it would actually move me two spaces along this track. If you prepare a lot, then you can guarantee the success of your mission. However, that takes a lot of time because you start with only two chips in your starting deck, which means if you have only the starting components, you start at two. You can spend time buying things. I could buy the backup systems. I could buy big data. I could get a research institute, which is any of the three symbols that I want. And then I could put all those in my launch pad, but that takes a while. And someone else might be taking chances and they get there before me and get more points and they accelerate their engine by getting the bonuses on the missions. Okay, high level view, there you go. That's what you're trying to do to give you points. And in general, when you reach a certain point threshold, 18 points with four people and 21 with three and 23 with two, that triggers the last round of the game. Rocketman is intuitive at a high level. You can't just pile stuff up on the launch pad and figure out what to do with it later. You must declare a mission, a blueprint for what you're trying to do, even if you do have flexibility in the exact destination, and then you can start putting things on the launch pad. Once you reach that engine threshold, you're like, great, I know it's possible to reach my destination, but I don't know whether it's actually going to succeed or not, which is what happens a lot with actual rocket launches and you decide to go in theory, in concept, it's not exactly clear. You can phrase it how you like, where you turn over a couple of cards and then abort. Maybe you were just trying to look at the conditions, you figure out things and you're like, oh, not quite right. And maybe you have to discard some components from the launch pad because things didn't look optimal. If you flip to that final card, the three, four, the third, fourth, or fifth card, depending on where you're going, you're either going to succeed or fail incredibly and have to start over, which can be a big hit because often it takes many turns to put things on the launch pad. And it's got a real risk reward to it that somewhat mimics the actual space program where sometimes, yes, you lose a mission, you lose people, you lose resources, everything goes. And it's a real blow. It's hard to stomach and you can minimize that risk as much as you want 
but it takes time to do that. And sometimes you don't want to let that time pass because other people are doing things and moving towards that point threshold. In my early games, I played four times on a review copy from Phalanx. My early games, I was very cautious in what I was trying to do. And it took a little bit to really realize that you could flip over that first card with no risk. You're not throwing away anything. And if you flip it over and you get a three or four and you add it to what you already have, you're like, this looks great. You take a chance for the optimal conditions. You had that window of opportunity. Let's push on and see whether it works or not. Now, you can put things on the launch pad as long as they have some sort of I get item on them. You can't put monetary cards. You can't put a card that has nothing in the upper left-hand corner. So you can put all sorts of things on the launch pad, even if they don't match your destination. You're going to the moon where you initially count only the flask symbols, but that's fine. You can put the computer chip symbols in the launch pad and you might want to because Rocketman has I think only one card that actually lets you trim cards from your deck. That's one of the big element of a deck building game where you want to filter out the stuff you don't need so that you can get to the things you do want more frequently. Cards, mission cards come out of your deck when you succeed with a mission. But other than that, I think there's only one way to get cards out. However, if you were putting things on your launch pad before you launch, they are naturally out of your deck and you can somewhat streamline your deck each time you have a mission underway by just putting everything in the launch pad and then you'll have a very small deck that you can cycle through over and over again to put things out there now why you might want to do that is because to put down a mission costs ten dollars uh, you can assume it's ten million to put things on the launch pad also costs ten dollars and if a card has a $10 symbol for the mission, it can pay for itself, but otherwise you need that money cycling through your system constantly to get things into the launch pad. You want to also buy cards that will give you more money. There are several cards that give you $20 instead of 10. There we go, get that in focus. Cost you $30 to buy this card. It'll give you 20 when you play it from your hand. It's got a special effect here like most of the cards. And you can ideally streamline your deck somewhat and then get those cards that will let you spend more and put stuff more in your launch pad. Or you just want all the non-monetary cards in the launch pad, so then you have a deck of money and you can buy things more easily from the display. However, many of the cards on the display require other things. So you can buy permanent engines, this card gives you two engines when you put it in the launch pad it has ten dollars here so you can use it to buy things or it pays for itself to go into the launch pad it's kind of a kooky thing if you're buying the three engine card it costs 50 bucks and a symbol so if you put all your symbols into the launch pad you can't even buy these cards and there are other cards that will have an icon cost as well such as this one, which cost a helix and 30 bucks. Gives you money, gives you a computer chip. That's cool. It can go in your launch pad for the computer chip. Maybe you want to keep it in your filtering deck for the money. Uh, you've got the effect as well. Uh, when you, I don't remember this one. When you used to pay, if you buy cards, you put them on top of your HQ, on top of your deck, instead of putting them in your discard pile and having to cycle them through. So. There's ways to sort of filter out your deck during the game by putting things in the launch pad. And that also gives you extra stuff that you can just throw away if the launch looks like it's going poorly. Fine, I'm going to the moon where I need flask, but I got some computer chip stuff and I'll just throw that away. And I really lose nothing in my attempted launch. Lots of cards give you bonuses for what you're trying to do they will have some power or effect that takes place when it's on the launch pad. And there'll be things like, look if at the start of your launch, look at the first three cards and choose the one you want. And if the launch succeeds, well then this card gets removed from the game. Or uh, in this one, if you flip over, you can discard this card from the launch pad along with whatever mission success card you just flipped and it just doesn't count. So if you flip a zero or one, throw this away, try something else. Or 
uh, after burner, after the final card, you advance further. So you can get that little final burst, and then I think the after burner is removed from the game. So everything, there's lots of stuff like that where things are just one shot. There are also cards uh, like here that have a different effect. So the asteroid was a laser ablation. You can remove this card from the game to get a uh, threat card that is on the display. You might have seen earlier there was a threat card, the climate crisis, climate change. This costs 50 to buy along with one symbol. It's worth two points, but this is a garbage card in your deck. It does nothing. So this is akin to the states and provinces in Dominion where it is valuable for points, but otherwise worthless. And you just want to cycle through it by getting cards that allow you to filter things out or that one card that allows you to remove things from the deck but you will still get the points for it at the end of the game. Let's look at the cards of your starting deck, which represent the missions that you can complete over the course of the game, although you can do at most six missions. 11 of the 12 cards have a resource in the upper left-hand corner, and that's what you will get when you can play the card from your hand. This one base you will hate and be glad if you can ever complete it or just get rid of it. It is a bane, bleh, terrible, but it serves a purpose in that you will you will be pushed to complete it just so you can be rid of it. You have only $50 spread over five cards and you have a hand of six cards. So if this is your initial starting hand, you have only $20 available to you, which is not enough to buy anything. The cheapest card on the market or the engine market is 30. So you can't buy anything here, but you can start a mission. Now what mission you wanna start might depend on the goal cards that you get. You have a deck of a dozen goal cards. You're going to receive two goals at the start of the game at random, and you score one of these at the end of the game. Each goal card shows a mission to complete for Earth, the Moon, and Mars, and each one of those you do, you get a point for. And if you are first for all the mission, all three of these in a two-player game, or two of them in a three player game or any of them in a four player game, you get a bonus of two points. So this card is worth zero to five points at the end of the game. Sometimes you'll have some overlap like these two, both want the satellites on the moon, but otherwise they do not duplicate. So you have some flexibility in what you're trying to do. If this were your starting hand, for example, you might look at this and say, well, I'm trying to get the spaceship to earth or the space hotel on earth. Let's start with one of those. And you primarily want to go to Earth because if you look at your cards, you'll notice that you have one helix, you have one flask, you have two chips, and that gives you an edge on trying to go to Earth, and the engine cost for going to Earth is lower than going anywhere else, which again makes perfect sense. So if this were your starting hand, you might say, well, I'm gonna take this spaceship to Earth. So let me pay $10. I put this over in my played area. These are all the cards that I've played. I'm gonna put the spaceship here and then I'll spend another $10 to put this engine into my launch pad. And now I've got these two cards. Maybe I wanna hold on to the chip because I figure I'm gonna to go to Earth but I don't need this. You are free on your turn to discard as many cards as you want from your hand. So I can just get rid of that useless base. I have this. I draw five cards from my deck. And now I have this for my next turn. Oh, I've got $30. Maybe I wanna buy this engine with the $30 because I need at least three engines to go to Earth. And again, I have only two in my deck. So spend this $30, put this here, put this here. Okay, get rid of the helix because that does not help me. And then refill my hand to six. This gives $10, so it pays for itself to go onto the launch pad. I've got $10 more to pay to put a chip out. I have enough engines now and I can go ahead and try to launch. Right, so again, shuffle the deck. 
You launch always at the end of your turn after doing everything else. I flip the first card. I have one chip plus this. I'm at spot three, so I need to get five over the next two cards. And maybe I just bag it right here. I don't want to take a chance. If I'd flipped a three or four, I'd go for it. Otherwise, discard. This goes into my warehouse at the end of my turn. Draw four more cards. Next turn, sure, I've got 30. I could buy something else. Maybe I want to buy big data, which will give me another chip. Maybe I want to buy this card that is worth $20, or I can discard from my hand in order to remove something from the game. This is really the only card that does that, I believe, and it's extremely useful, but maybe I don't want that right now. Maybe I just want to spend 10, get out a chip, 10 to get another engine, just so it's out of my life, discard the base, and then launch again. Now I start on spot two because of two chips. And I flip this, I got four. Oh, well, let's reveal another card. Oh, now I'm at five, and I need a three or four from what's left. So I have a slim chance, or I just bail and I will discard an engine, which is a superfluous engine because I still have three engines to go to Earth. And so on. That's the feel of the play, where you're trying to push your luck sometimes, get things prepped. These are out of my deck which means I'm going to be getting more money in general. This all goes here, we shuffle this. All right, now I've got $40. Maybe I wanna go ahead and get the backup systems because when this is on my launch pad, again, it has a chip and it will move me ahead one space. So sure, I'd spend 40 for this. And now I have only two cards left in my HQ, so which gives me good odds of possibly getting the thing I just bought. Oh, nope. But again, we carry through when we get here. So we're going to get these bonuses and then add these to the board. Again, engines are cumulative, so you just adjust those and flip them as needed. You've got these symbols where it's either the flask, chip, or helix. 20 bucks and you can increase your hand size, but these are for the base missions, which are extremely hard to do. Now, the money and the icon here, you get to use those once a turn. So once I get the $20 mission, if I wanna spend that, I just flip it for my turn. I've used it, it's done at the end of my turn, I flip it back. I can use this when I launch, it counts as a chip, or I can use it to purchase things. I can spend $30 in this for my Helix. Oh, there's 20. There's a helix, I need only 10 more dollars, and then I can buy this card. So you really accelerate your game as you start completing these missions. As I mentioned, I played four times on our review copy from Phalanx, twice with two players and twice with three. And we worried after our first game or two that perhaps the $20 bonus was essential, was the thing that you had to get first. And that felt similar to a lot of deck building games where the first thing you have to do, you're worrying about building up a money building engine first so that you can buy more cards and then eventually you switch over into a point generating engine. It felt like Rocketman might be following the, the same path, but then John went a different route in a later game, just focused on engines. He got cards that let him discard from his hand and then draw as many things as he discarded and filter through his cards more and he won again. So perhaps it's just that John is very good with the game. It's not scripted along those lines with that bonus, but it's definitely the more fun thing to do to get that bonus because then you can buy more stuff, which feels good, even though buying stuff is not necessarily going to give you victory as I have discovered repeatedly. That's just not how it's going to work. The game does point you in very particular directions. The goals, of course, give you a reason for doing something to begin with. Although the point value is not much, it doesn't feel essential, and sometimes you just want to go with whatever feels right and not worry about the goal. If someone else is building a space hotel and now you're building a space hotel, you're gonna get fewer points for it, so maybe you wanna do some other thing or try some other path or worry about getting the icons first because having the icon, the variable icon symbol bonus is also extremely useful 
because often you are trying to buy things that require a certain icon and that gives you whatever icon you need and it also gives you an icon for whatever you need for every single mission that you do in the future. So all of the bonuses are good, it's just the money feels better when you have it just because it's money. So there you go. You get to use it every single time whereas a permanent engine is used only when you're launching. The game does push you in certain directions. You have goal cards that give you a reason to do something because you're going to score points for it. That's something. You have two computer chips in the deck and only one of each of the other symbols. So the deck is kind of telling you, go to Earth first. And that makes sense, again, because the number of engines needed to do anything on Earth is much lower than going somewhere else. It's harder. I did one game where I tried to go to the moon first. There's a bonus, there's a one VP bonus. If you go to the moon, first person to go to the moon and the first one to go to Mars. And so I thought I'd get that while getting my hotel around the moon, while getting the $20 bonus and fueling myself. The problem is you need so many more engines and flask to get to the moon because you have to go to the 10 space on the track. It took me a long time to finally have enough resources to get there and by that time people had already completed two missions to earth and they had gotten these bonuses and established themselves and then they were moving forward so the game kind of pushes you in a certain direction and i tried to go elsewhere and didn't cut it at least the way i was trying to do it one thing we've noticed over the course of four games is often it feels like you kind of peter out about in the last quarter, it feels like I've bought everything I need to buy. There's not anything else in the market that's going to help me. Not necessarily. So really, I'm cycling through what I have and the market kind of dies off. There's a limited number of engines available, three of each engine number for a two player game and four for a three player game and five for a four player game. And so those will run out. There's a certain limit to how many engines you need anyway based on what you're trying to do. If, unless you're doing the 15 engine base mission to Mars, you just don't need that many engines. And you sort of top out at what you're doing in the deck and then you're just cycling through the deck and trying to get to the end first before anyone else. It's a race to that point total and then you have just a few end game points with the, again, the point tokens for being first to moon and Mars, your goal card, which gives you up to five points and then the threat cards that you can get. And the threat cards, they're just little little extra thing. The cost to get them rises as you get higher on the point track. So initially then they become $60 in it and a specific icon, and then $60 and this icon and one other general icon. It escalates the cost as a punishment or a reward for people who are farther back or a punishment for people who are higher up, it kind of thematically makes sense because if you are that far up on the track, you're essentially devoting yourself to this space exploration focus with your scientific agencies. And now you have to redirect resources to accomplish something else. That makes sense thematically, but also in game terms, it makes it easier for people who are behind to build up points for scoring at the end of the game which may or may not be enough to take you over. Again, the point threshold to end the game, 18, 20, 23, is fairly low, and you can get a fair number of points at the end, depending on how well you complete your goal. So there you go. Overview of Rocket Man, you played a number of times. The deck that you have that you're working with remains relatively small again because a lot of it gets filtered out into the launch pad and you're not necessarily buying a lot of things the deck itself where it's filtered into teal cards on top and pink cards on the bottom with a number of threat cards sort of mixed through there it's not that big so it doesn't have a ton of variety in what you're trying to see or what you will see as you go through the deck and you'll start looking for particular cards. You know they're coming at some point, but of course it's hard to prepare to have the resources to buy them unless you were just sitting on your hand and not doing anything and not discarding and just waiting to buy something, which seems like a losing approach to playing. Rocketman does include a solo mission, a solo game I have not played. You're setting up an AI deck 
which determines where the AI is going and how far they start, depending on whether you're doing an easy, medium, or difficult game. And then the, you turn out a secondary card to determine, first you're determining the destination and then what mission they're trying to do and how far they start. And they're going to advance one space on every single turn and they might advance again, depending on things that you're doing where you can throw away cards from the market, but each card you throw away moves them forward on the path. So they will score points and you're trying to score points and just end up with more than them. Solo games are not generally my thing, so I have not tried it. There you go. Rocket Man. Mm -hmm.